Hey gang, and welcome to your very first Redis tutorial. Okay, so first up, what exactly is Redis? Well, in simple terms, it's an in-memory data store, and it uses simple key value data structures to store your data in. Now, over the years, it's been commonly used as a caching layer that sits in front of your traditional databases like Postgres or Dynamo, whatever other database you might use. And the reason it was used this way is because Redis is extremely fast, since all data inside Redis is stored in memory, RAM, rather than on disk. So, if you had an API that interacted with a traditional database to query data, that process is going to take some time to finish and the end user ends up waiting around for it. And that would be the story for every following request as well. But with Redis in place as a caching server, data can sometimes be stored and retrieved from that instead, speeding up your API response time. The downside to storing data in memory is that it's volatile and it would be lost if the server crashes, which is why it was generally just used as a caching server on top of your regular database, because if the server crashed, then all the data would still be safe inside your database, which is more durable. But like with most things, Redis has evolved over the years, and it can now also be used as your primary database instead of just a caching layer. And that's thanks to some features like data persistence and replication to make sure your data is durable and available, additional modules for JSON support and search, which makes it much, much easier to store and query more complex data, and tools like Redis OM, which is an object mapping library that makes it really simple to interact with Redis from your application code. On top of that, we can now use something called Redis Cloud as well, to set up and manage the Redis database, which makes it incredibly simple to get started. Now, when we talk about these additional modules and tools being added to Redis, we can sometimes refer to them as the Redis stack. And Redis on its own, without those extra modules, is known as Redis core, which is basically the core features of Redis. Now in this series, we'll be focusing on Redis core and learning everything from the ground up, but I will also be releasing a follow on course to in the future, which dives into the Redis stack as well. So before we get started with setting up a Redis database and using it, I want to quickly talk about the way we store data in Redis using different data structures. Now, in its most basic sense, we store data in key and value pairs, where the key is like the identifier for that bit of data and the value is the data itself. And the data can take the form of various different data types. It could be a string, which is also used to store numbers as well. It could be a set, which is an unordered collection of strings, which must be unique. We have hashes, which are a little bit like objects in that they're a collection of key value pairs. Lists, which are a collection of string values, which don't need to be unique, but there is a caveat, which we'll see later. Sorted sets, which are a bit like sets, but where the values inside them are ordered according to some associated score. And there are some other data types as well, like streams and geospatial indexes. They're a little bit beyond the scope of this course, but there are other types as well. Now, I said that Redis stores data in key value pairs, right? And the keys themselves can be called whatever you want them to be called. For example, if you wanted to store some titles of books in a set, then your key might just be books. And that key would point to that set. You might also want to store several individual books as hashes, where each hash has a title property and an author property. So we need a separate key for each one of those books. Now, a common convention when we're doing something like this is to name the key, the resource name first, for example, books, and then a colon, and then an ID for that book. So for example, books one would point to one book hash, and books two would point to a different book hash, and so forth. So we will be looking at key naming and all the different data types in much more detail throughout the series. And we'll also look at how we can use some of them in a Next.js application. Now there's no real prerequisites to start in the series. However, like I just said, we will be having a go at using Redis briefly with a Next application. So if you wanna learn the latest version of Next.js first, I've got a big Next 13 masterclass course, which you can take the link to that is going to be down below the video. I've also got a smaller Next 13 crash course, which I'll leave the link to as well. Now, one last thing before we start, I just want to highlight this repo right here, Redis for Beginners. The link to this is going to be down below because I've put all the course files up on this repo, including a starter project for later on in the course, which is the Next.js uh, project we're going to start with. 
but we do have lesson code for some of the lessons here as well. Not the first half of the course, because we're not going to be creating some kind of application then. But for the second half of the course, so from lesson eight onwards, we're going to be using Redis in our own application. So I do have course files for all of those lessons. So to download one of those lessons, you can select the lesson branch, for example, lesson nine, and then you can go to the code button and then you can open with GitHub Desktop or download the zip and tally up to you, unzip it, and then just open that up in VS Code or whatever text editor you're using, install the dependencies, and away we go, basically. So anyway, that's your introduction to Redis out of the way. So in the next lesson, we're going to be setting up our first Redis database.